What's up, my name is Jay and in this video, I wanna show you how you can use GraphQL with WordPress. Here you can see I'm at wpgraphql.com, which is um, the plugin that we are going to use to get all this done, okay? And as you can see, they have a new plugin if you wanna use advanced custom fields, which I'm gonna show you that too, because I use a lot advanced custom field in my website. So yes, I need this. Um, so you can go to the website, you can read a lot of the documentation, you can use it for applications, you can use it for just static websites. There is a lot that you can do with it, okay? So I'm gonna go to my WordPress dashboard here. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is my plugin. So let's go. And as you can see, I have four plugins. You don't need all of them, but I'm gonna use them all in this website specifically. So you can see I have Advanced Custom Fields Pro because I'm gonna use it. I have WP GraphQL. So this one is something that we need to make our life very easy. And you're gonna see it in a minute. GraphQL, which is the one that is very important, the one that we need, WP GraphQL. And then WP GraphQL for advanced custom fields, okay? So um, the most important here is WP GraphQL, which is the one that you really need to hit that endpoint to get some data. And then graphical, which is very important because this is how you can write your queries and then you can see what data you get with that query. Let's go ahead and go to graphical. So you can see when you install um, GraphQL, the first thing you can do is go to your website. So right, mine is localhost. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and then slash GraphQL. All right, and if you see this, don't worry, this is normal. Um, but it seems like it's working, okay? You can, you're getting an error because we're not querying something, all right? This is saying just that, like we need um, one of these two parameters, okay? But it's working, okay? So I'm gonna close this. And then I'm gonna go here to graphical. So you can see I have here a new tab. I'm gonna click here. And you can see maybe um, you don't have something like this but this is just me, I was practicing. This is just a simple query to get the title of my post. So I'm gonna go to my post and see what I have here before we start playing with that. So I have three, um, as you can see, HTML via player, Flexbox, get an line from DOM. Very simple, so I'm gonna go back to see if that works. So you can see, I just wrote this simple query, so you can do it too, so you can test it. I'm gonna hit this play button and look at this. So right now, um, if you have a little bit of experience working with APIs, this is very similar. Like you hit an endpoint, right? You have an URL and you get something back like a JSON, JSON file. And this is exactly the same thing. It's just giving us some data that we can do whatever we want with it. So this is why WP GraphQL is very powerful because you can use these GraphQL queries and not we only look a lot better in the code, it will go faster. So this is the power, all right? It's that simple. So let's go ahead and let's do something. So we have the title, let's get the content. I wanna get the contents, maybe that's something that you want. Let's get the content and as you can see, you start writing and they give you options, see? They start giving you more options, featured image, content, comments, category. So you have a lot of options. And this is what I love about this plugin, the, the graphical plugin. You can start writing. And even if you don't know what you want, they're going to give you all these choices. And then you can select whatever you want. Maybe it was a comment. Maybe it's not a content. Maybe you want the comments and you can get it. All right. So for now, I want the comments. So I'm just going to go that and I'm going to hit the play button again. And look at this. Now we have the title and now we have the whole content. So it's the whole thing in HTML. Perfect, huh? So let's say that we want the ID of that post. We can just do ID. And here you can see the same thing. Let me do ID, let's see. So this is a unique ID. 
It seems like this is created by graphical. Let me see. I think it's the post ID. Let me hit play again. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is an ID, which is a unique ID for that post generated by GraphQL. And then we have the post ID, which is the actual number of the WordPress post ID. Okay, maybe this is something that is not helpful. Maybe it helps. If you don't want it, you can just remove it from the query. Hit play again, make sure it worked. And that's it. Now, this is perfect. I'm getting the title and the content. Let's say that this is all I need. But now I use a lot custom fields. So I'm going to create a custom field. And how can I get my custom field here? So I'm going to go ahead to custom field. I'm going to create a new group. Um, let's call it cats. It's going to be about cats. All right, let me make sure the post is a post. All right, so post type equal to post. Great. I'm going to add a new field here. Um, let's call it cat name, for example. There you go. Field type text. You can change it to whatever you want here. All right, something new is showing GraphQL. Yes, I wanted to show this in GraphQL. If you scroll down a little bit more, you will see here at the end showing GraphQL. So show this group in GraphQL. Yes. And then give it a name. I'm going to call it cats. And you can see I have right already have here like dogs. I was playing with it. Let's call it cats. Scroll up and let's just publish. All right. So now I have this group called cats and then I have a cat name field. So let's go to the post and let's see if this is working. I'm going to go here to my HTML video player post. And as you can see here, cats and then cat name. So I'm going to, I'm going to do, I don't know, Jack, whatever. Uh, I don't know, think that's a cat name, but maybe it is. All right. So that's it. I'm going to update this post. And now I have this custom field. So I'm going to go back to graphical. And let's see, let's start writing here. Cat. And you can see here already our group is giving us the option cats. But now you can see that it's red. And you know that um, when something is red, is there, there's something wrong with it or there's something that maybe there's a warning, an error or something. So if you hover, they will tell you something like, hey, this might have like subfield something. This is a maybe this, this is a group. Maybe there's a list something. So what you can do is you can hover and down here you can see if you click cat, then it give you the type. You can click here. And here you go. It can it's telling you the fields cat name. So what I'm going to do, open some brackets here. Cat name. See, and the same thing happens. Let me remove it. You can start writing and you can see it here. There you go. Cat name. So let's hit play again. Let's see if that works. There you go. So we have title content cats and then inside a cats cat name Jack. Perfect. So then if you go and scroll down a little bit, you will see more post and then cat cat name and null because there's nothing. Um, on those posts, I never added a cat name. So if I go ahead and add some more cats, so let's go to the post. I just want to make sure this works. Let's go to the Flexbox one. All right, cat name. Carlos. Great cat name. Update. Let's go back to graphical here. Let's hit the play button again. Scroll down. We have Jack in this one and we have Carlos in the Flexbox one. All right. And then um, we have this one null, which I'm fine. Maybe I don't want a cat in, in this post. So now what do we do with this data? How we can get this, how we can use this query, how we can use GraphQL, how we can make sure we're taking the advantage of this. So I'm going to open my text editor and we're going to use some JavaScript to get some data. All right. So this is my um, 2019 theme, child theme. Actually, you can see I have only like functions header and then I have this 
um, template that I created named blank page. So what I'm going to do is here at the bottom, I'm going to add some JavaScript. So let's go script. All right. Scroll down here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy and paste some JavaScript code because I don't want to um, code here from scratch and take your time. Um, but it's a very simple fetch code to get some data. So let's go ahead and copy. Let's do it here, right in between the script. All right, so here you can see that I'm, um, I'm using fetch. And this is my endpoint, my GraphQL endpoint, as you can see. And we're getting the GraphQL using post, the method. We have some head, we have a header. We're getting this data in JSON format, okay? And here in the body, we need to add that query, which we're gonna do right now, okay? So let's go ahead, right here. I'm just gonna create a variable. So const, let's do WPQL um, query, for example. It can be whatever you want, it doesn't have to be that. And this is a object. And here we're gonna write query, oops, like this. And then we're gonna open and close back text, just like that. Now here, we're going to add all that query from GraphQL. So let's go back to the WordPress. Let's copy this. You don't have to put the query, OK? Let's paste it right there. All right, let's, that's a lot better. Let's fix it a little bit more here. All right, that looks pretty. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this variable. And we're going to put it here in the body. We are using JSON stringify because this right here is an object and we need a JSON. OK, so we're going to put right here the double the, the variable. And then what's happening here is just getting, you know, as if you know how fetch works is getting a promise and then it's getting the data and then we're just consoling logging that data. All right. So as you can see here, I'm using JSON. And then if we go back to graphical, what I, you can see here, the JSON file is data and then post and then edges and then node. So let's go back here, make sure that that is correct. So it's JSON first because it's the one that I'm using here. It doesn't have to be JSON, but it's the one that I'm using. And then the data and then post and then edges. So I'm just constantly logging that data to make sure that it works. So let's save that. Let's go back to WordPress. Let's create a new page here. We need to make sure that we're using the blank page template. That is the one that I created with all that JavaScript. Test page. Let's preview this page. Let's take a look at the console. And of course, not working. Let's go back to the code. And let's take a look at the query. OK, um, we're missing a brackets here before post. And here. All right, let's fix this a little bit. Um, and cut name. All right, that's better. Let's save that. Let's see that's, that's working now. Go back, let's reload this page. All right, and now take a look at this. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And here you can see we have three. We have an array, which is a list. And then we have three different nodes, which are our post. And you can see if I open this, we have cat, and then we have cat named Jack. We have all the content, all the HTML. We have the title. Let's take a look at the other one. If you open it, we have cats again. Name cat name is Carlos and all the content and title. And this one's supposed to be cat name null because we don't have it. And we have all the content and the title. So this is working perfect right now, just like you hitting an endpoint from an, from an API and getting some data and doing whatever you want with it. But we are using the power of GraphQL with WordPress. Okay, so make sure you go 
There is a link in the description so you can download this plugin. If you use Advanced Custom Field, they have another plugin for that. So if you're interested, all the links to download these plugins are in the description of this video. So go ahead, download them and create something very cool. All right, and that's it. Subscribe if you wanna keep learning and click on the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.